What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday, and um, I want to kind of address a little something, something. Um, I have been doing YouTube really kind of heavy since 2016. It's hard to believe it's been eight years. Um, that's when I got my first thousand subscribers. And I've always been a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan that in watching ESPNs and things like that, that there always seemed like there was a narrative before Dak Prescott. It's funny because the same things that I talk about with Dak Prescott are the same things that I talked about with Tony Romo. They used to say he's a choker, even though he had more comeback victories than anybody else during the time that he was there. And they would always just, no matter what the Cowboys did, they wouldn't do the same thing, even though the same things were happening with other teams. They wouldn't, you know, call things out the same way. And you can see this when you think about Dak Prescott last year. Oh, my God. It was all interceptions all the time. Interceptions. Literally counting interceptions in the offseason. But yet, here it is. Josh Allen doubles the interceptions that Dak Prescott had this year, and nobody talks about interceptions anymore. Remember when there was the whole Dinkin and Duncan, you know? Yeah, the Cowboys are winning, but he's Dinkin and Duncan the ball down the field. So it was a bad thing, but it's like they're winning. Even when he was winning and, you know, throwing all these great numbers out there, and they say, well, those are just garbage time. And so it is always a narrative that's put out there. And, you know, guys like me and Law, you know, and Vash Lombardi's and things like that um, have been doing this for quite a while. You know, Jay Tux, and of course, you got Jerome's, you got all kinds of uh, great people that have been here on YouTube. And it used to be just kind of like our space and things. Um, now, it's been coined as new media because old media is dying. Old media is dying. You know, it's kind of like the landline at home. Nobody has a landline. In fact, here's where it's crazy because um, I finally cut cable at my home. And with it, we had the triple package of internet, cable, and phone. Ain't nobody dialed the phone in probably four years, but it was part of the package. And we always had a landline there. So my cable bill went from, with all the boxes I used to have, almost 300 a month to now 106 for the ultra high speed internet that I have. And I've got YouTube TV. I've evolved, I've changed. I'm not, and I'm happy because I can watch my YouTube TV here or the red brick house. I'm saving money big time. It's changed, it's easier. And that's the natural evolution. And this is where YouTube has become the wild, wild west of the media. Newspapers, it's all online now because nobody's going outside and reading a newspaper about the news from yesterday when I can get it on my computer right now as it happens. Magazines, you know, it used to be Sports Illustrated. There were no shows out there, so Sports Illustrated coming out on Thursday gave you all the sports news. Well, guess what? There's 24-hour news cycle of, of, the, of that, so that died out. And so radio is kind of being replaced, you know, AM sports radio talk by internet radio and, and Cirrus. And the people that are there in those old media don't like seeing what we're doing. Okay. I, listen, I went to JMU and on the party plan. Okay. I don't have a degree in journalism. In fact, I was one of the worst people in the world to speak. I, you see how often I screw up a title with my dyslexia but somehow for some reason people will watch us and then the ones that have been doing this the espns that are spending billions of dollars on doing productions and they see us and we're doing things it's kind of like wait a minute they're insulted because of what they've been instead of looking at this of this is how it's evolving you don't have to have a degree and this is where a Micah Parsons who's able to play football and go toe for toe with, with the big daddy of Stephen A. Smith, they see the writing on the wall 
where ESPN shows are becoming irrelevant, where new media is taking over. And this is why they're going so hard against Micah Parsons. But there's also been kind of on us guys, you know, well, we're not there at the star or we're in our mama's basement and things like that. We're not credible. We're just the village idiots and we don't know anything. Okay, that's fine. But for whatever reason, people like to watch us. And I will say a lot of times they will take from us. The Brian Baldinger stuff that you see, the film breakdown, Bosch and, Bosch and Law Nation were doing that shit way, way before, way before. And you see, in some regards, for a while there, the Dallas Cowboys had uh, almost like an executioner that was going through and getting channels deleted. Michael's channel was hit and lost because of the Cowboys, of the guy who worked for the Cowboys that was literally going around and copywriting channels and just destroying them. Yeah. Now, they haven't been doing that recently. <laughs> now my channel might go after putting that out there. Am I lying? No. Law Nation got hit, too. Yeah, Law got hit. Mike Fisher got hit. Yeah, a lot of people got hit uh, with that. But it's about two years ago. So, Jay Tuck is under siege on Twitter. And he put it out there. This is actually a great analogy. Shout out to Jay Tuck. And I hope uh, that I'll be able to spend some time uh, with him at the draft. He's 50-50 on whether he's going to go. And I'm hoping he goes. We had a great time last year. But listen into a little bit of this and watch the whole video. And definitely subscribe to Jay Tuck because he is definitely incredible with what he does. Hey. Oops. Get this going. I don't have hey, my mouse I want to ears. address yesterday's video. So a lot of people, thank you for watching the video, was reaching out to me saying, yo, Tuck, it feels like you're wanting to say and tell us something, but you just won't say it, right? And even though that's the case, what I have to understand is, even though I've accomplished a lot in my short media journey, right? There are still people who's trying to climb that mountaintop and reach the peak of their careers as well. So I can't be as chaotic, right? And ruin opportunities for them. I feel like as a leader in this community, it'd be selfish of me to do that. But I sat back yesterday and I thought, what is a easy digestible way that I can say what I'm trying to say without ruffling too many feathers, right? And what I'll say is this, as a kid, the X-Men, the X-Men was my favorite favorite comic book series and cartoon series i mean it was colorful you had characters with vibrant personalities you had action you had rogue like you had a lot of great things when it comes to the x-men and when it comes to the x-men everybody should be familiar with professor x not professor o but professor x right so who was professor x professor x was somebody who wanted mutants now, for the sake of this conversation, when I say mutants, I want you to think of new media and also content creators, right? So mutants, new media, right? But Professor X wanted mutants and human civilians to just coexist, right? But sometimes Professor X would say, hey, suppress your superpowers. Don't be as chaotic, right? Maybe Rogue need to wear your gloves, right? Wolverine, don't be as aggressive mystique how about you just kind of stay in your human form and just blend in and make everyone easier to digest us as mutants mm -hmm. versus walking around in your blue skin and just be resolved stay within the lines and just blend in so you kind of translate that that's telling some of my sisters in this industry don't wear your natural hair you know, straighten things out, make it a little bit more digest. How about you do your makeup a little bit differently? How about you change your vocal dialect just to blend in, to make things easier to digest when it comes to sports media? Hey, J Tuck, don't be so loud on Twitter. How about you just kind of just report mm -hmm. just like everyone else does so it's comfortable for everyone to understand and embrace you as a mutant or new media right but then 
there is my favorite comic book character like he's my number one comic book character who i love right i loved him ever since i was a kid i wrote reports on him when i was in third grade right so kind of funny i'm doing this right is magneto magneto also wanted mutants to be accepted but his approach was a little bit different he didn't want you to blend in he wanted you to realize you were special don't change mystique you walk around proudly in your blue skin wolverine be aggressive right gene gray you are the most dominant and physical being on this planet you are a god do not bow to them you don't have to sit and fit in to make them comfortable they should have to become comfortable with you right and so that's the kind of the same approach that you see with some content creators like no you don't have to change who you are if you like to cuss a little bit cuss a little bit you don't have to change your hair color you don't have to change your heritage to blend in to make everybody else comfortable to fit their standard if you like banging on twitter and going hard on twitter and speaking your truth you speak your truth don't cave mm -hmm. to them don't Do cave not to them cave. you be true to who you are because you are special you have the superpower you can create your own show you can start from scratch and build your following to 125,000 people with no additional help you can do a live show for two hours you can produce you are the superpower do not mm -hmm. cave to make everybody else comfortable we are the future charles not them there you go they no longer matter so when you take professor x and you take magneto mm -hmm. who was considered the real villain of the series it was magneto. <laughs> magneto he was the one they would send their armies after he was the one professor x we even kind of come after it kind of stuff i love this analogy like, he was considered the villain mm -hmm. he just wanted right for his people they would send their shots, they would send their armies, they would shoot bullets, but they just couldn't end Magneto. Shooting shots, shooting tweets. Stop. It's not enough. You're not powerful enough to stop me. Ooh. But then what happened? There's a character in the X-Men called Bolivar Trask. He was a scientist. And he viewed this is this is key right here. Content creators as a serious threat. So he knew that he couldn't send your typical army. And that's not going to work. Your guns, your, 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 your tanks, that is not going to work. So he created what's called Sentinels, which are robots and machines. But in order to complete what he was trying to do, he needed mutant DNA. Mm -hmm. So he had to get some of that mutant genetics, right? And so what you'll see sometimes in our community is certain insiders hey well nation I, I i love your content you're i love your show pal i would love to work with you hey mark holmes hey buddy i really like you we should work together vosh lombardi skywalker steel tm j tuck i love you we should work together mm -hmm. and then when you let your guard down you're stealing your mutant genetics right Yep. Still in it. Still in it. So now you look on shows and you see people with shades on, sunglasses on. That's that Vosh G. Mm -hmm. you, know? you see people able to build a new following. That's that Law Gene. You see people vlogging now. That's that Mark Holmes. You see people a little bit spicier on Twitter. That's that J Tuck DNA. You see people yeah. doing morning shows and trying to create and produce better shows. That's that Skywalker DNA. So what they are doing is building sentinels and they're taking our DNA from our community and pumping it into their own guys and sending him out to the YouTube sphere. So now it's easy, right, to say, hey. I there you have it. Watch the whole video and he is 100% right. Because see, the thing is, is it, it's almost comical because a lot of the media people would poo-poo YouTube. I had been for years trying to be able to get um, credentials. And the NFL would say, oh, it's YouTube. It's not real media and things. It's not real. But it's amazing that now the NFL has 
YouTube as a partner with the Sunday ticket. Now it's funny how ESPNs and everybody else are all coming to YouTube and that they are literally like, oh, you guys got to go. You know, you, you, you know, y'all aren't credible. We, we're the big wigs out here. We, 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 we're taking you. You're just a band of rebels. We're the real army. We're the real force. And it's like, yo, bro, y'all done killed your planet over there. Y'all planet is dead. Don't come trying to take over Earth over here. Something that you looked at and said, that's a piece of crap. That's not real. No. J. Tuck is 100% right. And it really opened up my eyes to it with the analogy that he had. We're, we're literally at war. We are literally at war. We've got the big guys out there that think that they're the big shit and that automatically everybody needs to bow down to them and do the things their way. And this is exactly why you see Micah Parsons attacked in the media. They look at this and say, wait a minute. We, we, I get up at 2 o'clock in the morning so we can do the production meeting and everything else to go ahead and do this show that cost us, you know, millions of dollars. And, and we got a three-hour show. <coughs> and here it is, a guy coming off the practice field in his house doing a podcast that's blowing up you know, the numbers in comparison to what we're doing. Yeah, it is. There is. There, there's a war out here at youtube jay tuck shout out to you bro you put it perfectly all right good people um i gotta get back to my day job i don't have a production crew or anything like that it's just me and of course michael anthony fitness reaction gig economy bringing it to you